Welcome back to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. I'm Connor Williams, joined by Paul McAllister, and this is the match preview for Brentford Everton uh, away at Brentford. Give me your thoughts and feelings going into the game, Paul. Um, I'd snap your hands off for a point. I'm not expecting anything out of this game. I know Brentford have another great start of the season. They don't look anywhere near the side that they were in the last few months of last season. Uh, I'm not kind of I'm not sure how things will play out for them. I, I, I'm kind of changing my mind every day on what three teams I think are ones who are going to go down. So, you know, one day I think Brentford will be in that bottom three. One day I think they won't. But when you look at Everton and just you know what the situation we're in, the fact that we've just basically got no forwards now, really, I just don't see how we're going to score a goal. And if you don't score goals, you don't win football matches. It's that simple. So. I'm not looking forward to this one bit, not one bit at all, and I'd take a point now. Yeah, exactly that. I mean, when you think of they've played United, which was great, but um, it is United that are sort of out of sorts. Again, Drew with Leicester, good result on paper, but this is a Leicester where Brendan Rodgers has apparently got yeah, the team Le- ready. Le- Leicester are getting beat left, right and centre, aren't they? Yeah, they lost to Fulham. I mean, Fulham have had a good start, but I think that will fizzle out eventually, and I think they'll drop towards the bottom. Um, but then saying that, like you said, without a striker, we've had Chelsea, tough game. I thought we did all right with that, bearing in mind no forward. Villa, I'm not impressed with them. I think they could be in just as much trouble if they don't change. And then Nottingham Forest, where all their spending, I they, I didn't see enough from them to think, oh, yeah, these are a team that are, you know, miles are better than us. Um, so it literally is just a case of, it, do, it doesn't really matter how good or bad they are. We are seriously... What we are, yeah. yeah. You don't have to be. Yeah. You don't have to be good to get anything against Everton currently. No, and I think there was a stat going around before saying we're in like the top four or five for chance creation or something, or shots or something, something like that. Um, but then we're in like the bottom, like very near bottom for goals, which screams something that I mean fans knew already. You don't need stats to tell you that. You need a goal scorer. Yeah. Um. I I will say this: the Anthony Gordon stuff that's dragging on. We might as well talk about it. I wouldn't take that now. A week, you know, when we did that video about a week and a half ago, when the first, you know, supposed bid went in of about forty million, I was saying, yeah, take it, snap the hand off, reinvest it. That was ages ago. We've got what a week to go. It's too late now. It's too late. I just say to them, I'm sorry, you did not. We'd have taken this fee if you'd have offered this a few um, few days before, but we haven't got time to spend this now. It's like literally that ten million that we got offered for our Teta. It's just going to go somewhere else, and we're not going to have it in the bank by into use in January. And even if we do by January, it's the situation's even worse than it is on the transfer deadline day of the summer. So it's just too late in the day now for us to be selling any players. I think we're just going to have to go with what we've got and just say to Chelsea, no matter who they're ringing up and what they're bidding, I'm sorry, you've left it too late. Our squad is settled now. There's going to be no one going out the door unless it's just someone who we're sending out on loan because we've got no use for them or they're a kid and we just want to kind of get them playing somewhere. There's going to be no major transfers out of this club. That's what I'd be saying now. We've just got to accept what we've got and try and work, make it work. I completely agree, mate. I think uh, anything now would really be scattergunning uh, and it'd be a waste of selling a, a you know, decent prospect for it as well. Um, going back to the game, though, um, at Brentford, um, last season, sort of a mixed bag. Uh, they beat us in the league, we beat them in the cup, but they got the double in the end in the Premier League. Um, I can't imagine it's going to be easy at the community stadium either. It's a tough place to go. Um, the atmosphere there tends to be quite good. Um, how do you think the game will play out? Um, I spoke to um, Billy from Be Sotted and I said, I think we're going to invite a lot of pressure and soak up a lot of pressure in this. Um, how do you think it's going to go? I can see us setting up at the low block because what other option have we got? We can't play, you know, um, free-flowing football because we haven't got the midfielders available or not fit because that oh, no, I don't think is going to start. I know he looked a bit better than the cup the other night, but when he came on against... Um, when Onana came on against Forrest, he looked like an headless chicken. That's how I write. He, he didn't get up to the speed of the game at all, so... Not, not writing them off, but it's we've got to be very, very careful about how we integrate him into this team. You can't just throw him in at the deep end because the, based on what we've seen in that Forest game, it could be an absolute disaster. It could blow up on our face massively. The lad's got to learn and learn quickly. Um, 
we've got no one up front to um, be any sort of threat because I've said it a thousand times, Solomon Rondon is not a Premier League level footballer. He's absolutely woeful and it's embarrassing that he's even getting a wage off us. He was brought in to be a snitch for Rafa Benitez and a year later, still using him as our first choice striker. That's how bad the situation is. Even if he starts, I'm expecting less than nothing from him. You saw how good he is the other night when he missed all five sitters in the cup. Um, Dwight McNeil, I like McNeil or I'm hopeful over McNeil, but he's had a bit of a tough time to start with. And he, Frank tried him as a centre forward when he brought him on against Nottingham Forest, and the results were absolutely woeful. He, he didn't have a clue what he was doing. He was probably the worst player on the pitch, and I don't blame Dwight McNeil for that. Dwight McNeil was played totally out of position. That was on Frank Lampard. That he should never have brought Dwight McNeil on to play that sort of role, and he absolutely can't put Dwight McNeil in that role in, in this Brentford game coming up. Um, Anthony Gordon, we tried him as a centre forward in the first couple of games. It didn't work because he's got no presence about him. He's you know he's all right on the ball and running the players, but he can't hold the ball up. He, a lot of the time, defenders just read him too easily. Um, Damani Gray is can finish. We saw that against Forest and last season. When you get him one on one with a goalie, he can put it away. But are we going to get him one on one with a goalie? We don't tend to play balls over the top very often. I don't see us doing that much. Um, he's not especially great at getting away from his man. He can't beat the offside trap. I just I don't see what our option is other than to just play ultra defensive and try and grind this out and maybe hope that we get a lucky bounce off a corner or something or. Um, the sort of goal that we scored against Villa, that got chalked off. It was just a ball into the box and one of our players got to it first and it met it perfectly and we snuck it over the line and sadly against Villa it was chalked off. But I just don't see us opening up Brentford or getting in behind Brentford at all. Not Probably not even once during the entire 90 minutes. So we just have to focus on keeping them out if we can. Yeah, I, I pretty much agree, mate. I think I think it's going to take a scrappy goal or like like the Nottingham Forest where Pickford just absolutely launches in and somebody they might just... Yeah, they, they switch off for, for, for two, three seconds and we capitalise, yeah. Uh, um, you've mentioned a couple of the players there. Give me give me the lineup you think you'll go with for this. Um, You know, Pickford in goal, obviously. Um, back five of Patterson, Holgate, Tarkovsky and Cody. With um, Michaelenko on the left, so I would I wouldn't have a problem if he started that Benagri. Um, that Benagri's looked okay, hasn't he? And I like I, lo- I like Michaelenko, but I think that Benagri's got a decent cross on him. So if we do get high up the pitch, I'd like to see Benagri float a few balls into the box and see if someone can get on the end of it. But I think it will be Michaelenko who starts and get back on topic. And then in the middle, I could see us just playing a Wolby and Davis again if Davis is fit. I know he pulls up. Against the in the warm up against Fleetwood, I, I, have you heard anything about that? Is he is it just a little precaution? Precaution? Is he injured and out for a period? Or I think the it club might said just anything? Be uh, the club haven't said anything. I mean, from what I I, I didn't watch the Fleetwood game, but from what I've heard, it's, it's precaution. It's a good job he didn't play. I've heard they pretty much went to boot every player off the yeah. field. Yeah, if he's healthy, then that's uh, it. Will probably be Davis who starts with a Wolby again, like they did against Forest, and then. It's probably just going to be Gordon, Damari Gray, and Rondon. Never missing anyone. I, um, I wouldn't have a problem if he starts with McNeil. Or McNeil's kind of in the in the Boo Boy Club at the moment, which is not fair on him personally. But maybe that's another video. But I would like to see us play McNeil. But I think he's just going to go with the exact same lineup he started with against Forest. Yeah, I, I, I mean, not even. I think he'll go the same, but uh, it's not like he's got a choice really. I think no, he's, it, it, it isn't. No, no, and that's why I'm. That's why I'm not going to... It's hard because for me, against Forrest, Lampard got his substitutions absolutely wrong. They were terrible tactical decisions that should have cost us the game because we went 1-0 down and we only got that late equaliser because we were massively lucky. You know, take away chances created. Those tactical subs that Lampard used in the second half against Forrest basically handed the game to Forrest and it's, it was more their fault that they just couldn't hang on. They switched off for a second and we capitalised with that ball from Pickford to Tamari Gray, but in terms of like what his options are, what really are Frank's options, other than maybe swapping, you know, a midfielder out for Onana? I don't know where Alan is. Is he still injured? I heard he was fit, but he wasn't involved against Fleetwood. Rumoured to be on his way out. And if he's on his way out, that leaves us with even less bodies, doesn't it? So it's, there's only so much you can criticise Lampard. Yeah, he's getting his substitutions wrong, but 
what other substitutions can he and should he have made? Yeah. <laughs> the club are just going to leave him with nothing. So That's, I mean, uh, it's it's getting very thin on the ground. I knew I knew young lads would make an appearance in the cup game. I said it on the um, predicted lineup. I was like, he's going he's going to play them as subs, um, just because. He's got no other choice, really, has he? Um, and it's it's good it's good anyway to play them in cup games like that, um, for experience. But it was always going to happen because he's got no real choice. Um, quickly, give us your your one to watch for Brentford that you think you might cause us a bit of trouble. Ivan Tony, isn't it? Um, it, it's just you know he's a handful. He's a live wire. The only thing that makes us think that hopefully we'll get a grip of him is the fact that we're going to play three centre halves because. I know what they say. It's 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 free at the back, out in possession. It's five at the back, out of possession. With Everton, it's just five at the back, full stop. It's five at the back, and uh, Tony plays as a lone striker, doesn't he? With like a kind of an attacking midfielder off him. So yeah. hopefully, someone Tarkowski, you know, he has a bad day against Forest. He's got to redeem himself, put in a really good performance. Hopefully, either him or Cody, no matter which one of them is in the middle, can just get a grip of um, Tony and mark him out the game. But as I said, I don't think Brentford at all that. You know, Ericsson made a massive difference for them when they got him in January. And as far as I'm concerned, he's the reason they stayed up. And if they go down this season, it'll be because he's not there. But uh, as I was saying before, you just don't, you don't have to be good to beat Everton at the moment. You just gotta keep causing us problems and just hope that you get a, you get that breakthrough. Because once you go ahead against us, we're not gonna beg you back because we haven't got a goal in us to save our life. Yeah, well, with that being said, I'm going to ask you very quickly for your score prediction for the game. Um, this one's a bit tough on. Uh, that's it. You know, all my common sense is saying they're going to win and they'll probably win it in, in, like in a tight game, but I'm just going to be, try and be hopeful and say, you know, we can keep a clean sheet. I'd be delighted with that considering the situation that we're in at the moment. We can just keep them out, get a clean sheet, and that means at least one point and that means, you know, we get something. We're not having three get three losses out of the first four, which would be really, really not good. Not quite like you know, press the red button, absolutely panic, but it's not far off from that. Losing three games out of your first four when the first four games you'd only really play, you only play, you've only played one team who are guaranteed to be finishing above us on paper, and that's Chelsea. If we actually had all our di- d- ducks in a row and made the sack and got our business done sooner. I don't see any reason why we couldn't be finishing against uh, uh, above Villa, Brentford and Forest this season. We should be, especially Forest and um, Brentford. But we're in the situation we're in at the moment, so we've just got to take anything, how, how, no matter how we can get it. Completely agree, mate. Um, completely agree. I, I think it's going to be... I'm going to go nil-nil. Um, it'll be like a dour say, game. It'll be last on match of the day, no matter what. Yeah, I have a good feeling we're probably going to lose, but I can't quite make myself say that. Um, but that is all we've got time for. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Leave your comment of your score predictions for the game as well. Paul, thank you for coming on and speaking to me, mate. It's been a pleasure as always. No worries, mate. Feeling as upbeat and positive as ever. <laughs> as always. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you soon. See you soon, guys. <laughs>